Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on uh, biostatistics and design of experiments. Uh, we will talk uh, about hypergeometric and log normal distributions. Um, yesterday I introduced uh, hypergeometric, let me continue on that. So, hypergeometric is uh, um, a distribution which uh, looks at um, situations where the population is not very large. That means, the sample size are almost in the ballpark figure of population unlike, unlike, unlike a normal distribution where the population is very, very large almost infinite. So, here the sample also is reasonably large comparable to the population and the um, probability distribution is given by this uh, C is x, C n minus x by n minus small x, C n n where capital N is the population, n is the sample size, okay. Um, x is the um, number of successes in the trial, okay. Uh, S is the maximum possible number of successes and this is called the probability of observing x successes. Okay, so, the mean is given by mu into S small n by capital N, n is your sample size, capital N is the population size, S is the possible number of successes that is the maximum that is possible. And the variance is given in this formula S n minus s multiplied by n capital N minus small n divided by n square n minus 1. Okay? Um, so, this is the variance and this is the mean of this particular distribution which is called the hypergeometric distribution. So, as I said here the um, sample size is reasonably uh, very close and comparable to the population unlike the normal. Okay. So, it is a discrete distribution because um, we are taking sample is done without replacement. Okay. So, you take it out and there is no replacement. Uh, n is a finite and known. Each trial has exactly two possible outcomes success or failure. Okay. Um, suppose I pick up uh, uh, balls from bag which may have a black or white. Okay. So, success, failure, black, white, yes, no. Um, the trials are not independent x is the number of successes in the n trials. Okay. Uh, let us look at a problem. So, it arises because of sampling from a fixed population. So, imagine um, there are 50 colonies okay, which has 5 mutants. So, 45 of them are normal. Okay. Now, I have removed 10 colonies from this lot and imagine there are uh, 4 exactly 4 mutants of the, out of this 10. So, 6 of them are normal. So, we have drawn 10, okay. we have drawn 10, 4 of them are mutant, normal is 6. Okay. Uh, the total has 5 mutants and 45 normal, and the total is 50. Okay. So, we cannot exactly model by binomial because the probability of success on each trial is not the same because we are removing it and we are not replacing them. Okay. Okay. Unlike a coin, you know, we toss heads or tails, then again we toss the coin. So, probability is again heads or tails is 0.5 and so on. Okay. So, uh, in, whereas in this case we have removed it um, and we are not replacing it. So, the probability keeps changing. So, in such situation you think about hypergeometric distribution. Do you understand uh, the difference? Okay. Okay, now, uh, because when you remove for example, these balls or these mutants, uh, the what is remaining changes keep changing. Okay. So, the probability of that keeps changing. Okay. So, the probability of drawing exactly 4 black balls or 4 mutants in this particular example um, can be calculated from that formula. What is this formula? C s x okay, into C n minus s d of n minus x C of n uh, small n. Okay. So, we just uh, what we have got here in this particular thing is we have got 4 successes in a sample of 10, the maximum successes possible is 5 in capital N of 50. So, capital N is 50, uh, small n is 10, uh, capital S is 5, small x is 4. Okay. So, we can uh, substitute in our equation. So, we have a okay, C 5 4, C 45 6. 
okay. 4 is uh, the mutants you, select, uh, you took out from the 10, so the remaining is 6 here. So, what is C54? If you remember uh, your factorial, this is factorial 5 divided by um, 4 factorial divided by 5 minus 4 factorial, this one is 45 factorial divided by 6 factorial uh, divided by 39 factorial, this is 50 factorial divided by 10 factorial divided by 40 factorial. So, if you do this, uh, C54 will come out to be 5 and um, this particular 45 factorial divided by 6 factorial divided by 39 factorial will come out to be this and this will come out to be this. So, you end up having a probability of 0 0.0039. Okay, what is the probability of getting all 5 as uh, say black or mutant? So, the remaining 5 um, in that sample of 10 will be normal. So, what we will do? We put uh, here 5, this will 6 will become 5, okay, or other things will remain same. So, when you do that, of course, C55 five five is 1, if you remember from your olden days. So, we get out a probability very small 0 0.00011. So, if this is as expected if you want to um, take out all the 5 mutants okay, and when you take a sample of 10 obviously, it is much larger than taking out 4 mutants in a sample of um, 10. Okay, now, um, we can also do it by Excel there is a function uh, hyper geometric distribution okay, um, in that uh, we have uh, a sample. Okay successes number of samples. So, this will be like x, this will be like small n, um, this will be like uh, uh, your capital S and this will be like your capital N. Do you understand? Okay, this is like your x, this will be like small n, this will be like your capital S, this will be like your capital N. Okay, let us uh, look at it for this particular problem situation. Uh, okay, using this particular uh, excel piece. Uh, let me first get out my Excel out of this. Okay, so we do Excel. Okay, so we say hypergeometric distribution, hypergeometric. So this is like we are getting uh, four uh, mutants or four black ball in a sample of ten. The maximum that is possible is five. Uh, the capital N is 50. So, we substitute and then we should get point, um, 0.0039. Okay. So, it has got a probability of 0 0.0039. So, if all 5 needs to be um, black or uh, mutant, uh, same thing. We can do uh, MDIST. Okay. Um, 5 comma out of 10, 5 out of 50, right? 0 0.30119. So, um, sorry, 0 0.30119. Okay. So we can use um, Excel also to do the same thing. Okay. It's quite simple with the Excel. As you can see here, we give the number of uh, successes uh, in a sample. And uh, this is the maximum number of successes possible, and this is the population okay, number. Uh, okay, we cannot use binomial as I said, uh, we are taking out and we are not replacing. So, obviously, the probability may keep changing as you keep drawing uh, uh, mutants. Okay, let us look at another problem. Okay, so, there are 80 significant genes from a microarray experiments of yeast, and it has got a 6000 genes. Okay. Uh, we have taken 80 significant genes. Now, 10 of these 80 are in BPGO term that is DNA replication, okay. uh, but total um, number of these genes in GO term is 100. So, what is the probability of this GO occurrence by this chance? Okay. So, 6000 genes maximum possible is 100, okay, maximum possible is 100. Uh, when we took out 80 in that list, um, we find 10. Uh, so, uh, okay. So, we will call it 10 successes out of 80, the maximum um, possible is 100, uh, so capital N is 6000. So, here small n is 80, um, x is 10, okay. small n is 80, x is 10 and um, the maximum that is capital S is 100, okay. so we can get the probability. So, hypergeometric distribution, 
quite straightforward. This is uh, hype hype G E O M D I S T. Okay, so the um, what we got is ten uh, in a list of when we took out eighty, but maximum possible is hundred uh, out of six thousand. Okay, so we get five point nine into ten power minus seven. Understand? So it's quite uh, straightforward using the Excel, but um, this distribution is useful um, where uh, we cannot use binomial, but this also has like uh, yes, no, um, live dead and that sort of situation we can use actually. So we can uh, uh, use in problems where we actually do not uh, know the situations unlike, um, okay, um, we do not, for example, let us take um, n laboratory mice n of them small n are male, so n minus n are females. Now um, we do a certain mutation af after radiation. So now there are m new mutant mice, okay. Uh, you do not know whether uh, in this m how many males are mutants and how many females are mutant, okay. That is the problem, okay. Then how do we do this actually, okay. So there is something called Fisher's exact test which uh, cannot break it down, but it can give you a total probability of this actually. Uh, Let us look at one problem. So, there is a 2 by 2 table, um, of course 2 by 2 table contingency we used to use chi square, um, but here uh, we are going to use Fisher table, okay. Uh, this Fisher's exact test, it does not do a test statistics and there is no critical value, but it gives you only a p value for observing this type of uh, um, numbers, okay. So, for different types of tables, it just gives you what is the probability, okay. So, let us look at an example. So, there is a HIV infection uh, and there is a, a sexually transmitted in this, that is the history of sexual transmission in sub-Sahara African country. So, um, S for a history of sexually transmitted disease, no, and HIV infection S and no. So, we find that uh, there are three cases where uh, there is a history of um, STD and also HIV infection. There is a history of STD, but no HIV infection is this much. There is no um, history of STD, but there is HIV infection. There is no history of STD and there is no HIV infection. So, you have this data, you can find out what is the probability uh, of getting um, this type of uh, table, okay. So, this uh, Fisher's exact test gives you that sort of uh, um, numbers, it does not have a test statistics, it does not give you a critical value and comparison and p value and so on actually. Uh, so, how do we go about doing this? So, we look at it as a prob uh, hypergeometric distribution, okay, this is an hypergeometric distribution. So, we look at different factorials um, of uh, um, creating this type of numbers, okay. So, we can have here 3, if you have 2 then this will become 8, okay, and you can have 1 then this will become 9 or if you have 0 this can become entirely 10 also, okay. So, we will look at each one of them. Um, Okay, so probability of 3, 7, 5, 10, okay, 3, 7, 5, 10 is uh, given by 10 factorial, 15 factorial, 8 factorial, 17 factorial, okay, what is that? 10 factorial, 15 factorial, 8 factorial, 17 factorial divided by uh, 25 factorial, okay, 25 is the total, uh, 3 factorial, 7 factorial, 5 factorial, 10 factorial, okay. So, that gives you a probability of 0 0.3332, you understand? So, um, the probability of seeing this type of uh, contingency table, okay, with 3, 7, 5, 10 uh, is this much. So, similarly we can uh, do for uh, just like 3, we can do for 2. 2 means, uh, as I said, if it is 2, this will become, uh, okay, this will become uh, 8 here, okay. Okay, if it is 2, this will become 8 and this will become 6 because the, the total you are maintaining. So, if this becomes 2 VSS, then obviously this will become 6 and if it is 2 SS, then obviously this will become 8, okay. So, again use the same uh, approach um, for a 
2, 8, 6, 9, we do 10 factorial, 15 factorial, 8 factorial, 17 factorial that is the these uh, numbers divided by 25 factorial, 2 factorial, 8 factorial, 6 factorial, 9 factorial that is a probability of 0 0.208 and uh, for a 1978 that means if we put 1 um, okay, if I put 1 here this will become 9, if I put 1 here this will become 7 for a 1978 then that probability is given by 10 factorial 15, 8, 17 these are the row sums and column sums divided by 25 factorial this is the grand total then 1978 that gives you a probability of 0 0.0595. So, if you want to see 0, 10, 8, 7 that is 0, 10, 8, 7 means here 0. So, then this will become 10, this will become 8. Okay. So, for a 0, 10, 8, 7 again 10 factorial 15, 8, 17 divided by 25, 0, 10, 8, 7 that gives you a probability of 0 0.0059. So, a probability of finding this sort of 3, 7, 5, 10 is given like this probability of finding uh, 286769 is given like this, probability of finding 1978 is given like this, probability of finding this is given like this actually, we understand. Uh, so, this uh, Fisher's exact test um, is used in situations where uh, there is no test statistics, okay. we cannot use a chi-square, but it gives you a probability value here. Okay, so, there is no test statistics, there is no critical value, but it tells you what is the probability of observing this type of uh, um, table. Okay. So, you see that uh, uh, the hypergeometric uh, is useful in this type of situations where uh, the n capital N is known unlike the normal distribution and your small n is comparable to capital N. Okay. The small n is the sample size. Okay, let us look at uh, another distribution that is called log normal distribution. So, it is a logarithmic of normal distribution. So, it is not uh, yeah, uniform, uh, it is defined in this form uh, a random variable x is said to have a log normal distribution if it looks uh, like this. You can see it almost looks like your uh, uh, normal curve, but you have ln x there okay, for x greater than 0, okay, if it is it's 0 for x less than 0. Okay. So, sometimes it is called anti log normal distribution because the distribution of the random variable x. Uh, it is also called uh, Cobb Douglas distribution if you are analyzing economic data. Okay. Uh, the probability density uh, function, distribution function um, okay, for the log normal. So, the mean is given by E mu plus sigma square by 2, mu is your uh, okay, mean and sigma is your and then variance is given by e 2 mu e um, sigma square e sigma square minus 1 and the median that is at the 50 percent point is given by e raised to the power mu. Uh, the cumulative distribution function is given uh, like this n logarithm of x minus mu by sigma. Okay, now, this distribution is unimodal and the mode is given by e mu minus sigma square, okay. uh, but it is not uh, symmetric as you can see here it is not symmetric okay and uh, this is the mode mode is e mu minus sigma square and the median is e mu okay so obviously median is greater than mode okay and this is how the, the graphs will look like the no, normal distribution okay so excel also has a command log normal dist where you give x is the value at which you want to evaluate the function uh, mean uh, is a mean of uh, logarithm x, this is the standard deviation of uh, this log normal distribution. Do you understand? So, we give at which where you want to find where the mean is given, standard deviation is given. Uh, you can look at a problem um, which can give you some idea about it. So, ductile strength of some biomaterials follow log normal distribution, mu is phi and sigma is 0.5, uh, compute the uh, E and the variance. What is E? mean e mu plus sigma square by 2 right so how do you ca calculate very simple e mu plus sigma square by 2 so mu is given by 0.5 i mean sorry 5 and the sigma is 0.1 uh, so uh, square root divided by 2 uh, so the mean is given by this variance what is the formula for variance um, variance is given like this right e raised to the power 2 mu e sigma square e sigma square minus 1 so we calculate um, 
there and we get a variance of 223. Now the question is um, third um, compute um, the probability that uh, the data will lie between 110 and 130 okay. So um, okay 110 and 130 ah, before that sorry before that this compute that the, the uh, what is the probability for x greater than 120 okay. So what do we do? Uh, we calculate 1 minus x less than 120, you all remember that right. And uh, then we calculate the z, z, if you remember our old z, uh, z how do we calculate x minus mu by sigma right. Uh, so uh, x minus mu um, here we take logarithm x okay, right, 120 for x means logarithm x uh, mu is given by 5, sigma is 0 0.1, so we get 2.13. Okay, so we go to you remember our old is a, is a table 2.13 okay, 0 0.0166 0 0.0166 you remember our old uh, z table uh, so it is 0 0.0166 0 1 minus 0 0.0166 is 0 0.983 so the probability of having x greater than 120 is 0 0.9833 so here we have to use the z table, but here um, remember x minus mu by sigma is our z, but here we take the logarithm of x, that is the only difference. Now how do we do this uh, part, um, compute uh, for probability for x uh, lying between 110 and 130, this is like just like our z calculation, you remember long time back we did that, only thing is instead of x we use logarithm x, okay. So um, how do you do this? for x uh, between 110 and 130. So we take logarithm of 110, we take logarithm of 130, mu is 5, sigma is 0 0.1. So when we calculate this it comes out to be 2.99, 1.32. So um, go to our z table 2.99, 2.99 is 0 0.0014, um, Okay, 0 0.0014 and 1.32 is given by 1.32. Remember this. This is our z table. 0 0.0934. This is our z table. If you remember, 0 0.0934. So we subtract. We end up with 0 0.092. So the probability of having uh, between 110 and 130 of x is 0 0.092. Uh, median. The question is here. What is the value of the median ductile strength? As you know median we have this equation e raised to the power mu simple. So what we do um, e raised to the power mu, mu is given by 5 so that gives you 148.41. So you see um, all these calculations can be done uh, instead of x we use uh, ln x. So we calculate z and then we go to our z table and uh, start getting the probability value. So it is like that standardized uh, normal distribution. Okay, so, um, the log normal distribution is also a useful uh, uh, type of function okay, and uh, you have the excel command also for log normal distribution um, which uh, also plays a very important role as I showed you in an example related to um, biomaterial. Okay. Um, so we looked at uh, different types of distributions over the past uh, 3 or 4 lectures, the Weibull distribution apart from our uh, um, the f distribution, t distribution, normal distribution, binomial, um, then um, the poison we looked at things like Weibull distribution like uh, the uh, beta distribution, then uh, log normal distribution, okay, hypergeometric distribution. So all these are very useful distributions to have um, as you can see many of them are ordinal uh, type of data and um, in some situations where we cannot use a, um, a chi-square test then we may have to use uh, these type of uh, distributions and uh, tests uh, for our calculations. Okay. Thank you very much, we will continue further.